Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to look at two verses. Verses 57 and 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 57 and 58. The title of the message is How to Serve the Lord Right. How to Serve the Lord Right. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. The Bible says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Brother Nathan, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us, Lord. And thank you for your word. And thank the thank Lord for the men that have came before us, for the apostles that showed us how to live a life and how to live a godly Christian life, a life that's faithful. And a life that you can see that they just really fought the fight. They endure hardness and hardness that we don't even understand today. Father, I just pray, oh Lord, that you use Pastor Jay, Lord. I pray that you yeah. just pick our hearts and mm-hmm. soften up our hearts. And I pray, oh Lord, that we'll come out here and leave this place as better Christians. I pray that we'll leave this place as Christians that will love you more and want to do what's right. Father, I pray, oh Lord, that you bless this message. I pray all this in Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. How to serve the Lord right. Now, serving the Lord is part of your life. It's part of my life. It's our duty, and it's things that we must do as a saved Christian. You and I are bought with a price. Jesus Christ bought us with his precious blood. And it's rightful for us to serve the Lord. Psalms 102 says, serve the Lord with gladness. So whether you're in Old Testament, whether in New Testament, it is one universal fact that you and I need to serve the Lord. And we need to serve the Lord with gladness. However, many people serve the Lord not right, but they serve the Lord wrongly. Many times before you find the truth, before you find, you know, right doctrine, dispensationalism, you serve the Lord wrongly. Many times you think you're doing right things, but essentially you're doing the wrong things sincerely. We see many of the cults out there who say they serve the Lord. However, what they do is they serve the devil. When you do not serve the Lord right, then you serve the devil. As simple as that. Even as Christians, when you do not serve the Lord, that means that you're serving the devil. Sometimes you and I forget the fact that we can always serve someone other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. This morning, you and I have to Examine our heart and see how are we serving the Lord. It is a question that we should ask ourselves on a daily basis. Because at any moment, you could have served the Lord Jesus Christ for 20 years, 30 years from bottom of your heart. But just like that, you could lose it and you could serve something else. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, the Bible says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. So it is true that at any moment, at any moment, based on what you're doing, you're either serving the Lord Jesus Christ or you're serving the devil. Then what are some of the ways to wrongly serve the Lord? Number one, If you are serving the Lord to show off to others, then that's wrong. Many times, people become Bible believers just to show off to other people. 1 Corinthians 8.1, knowledge puffs up. 
That's why it is very, 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 very dangerous for new believers to start thinking that you know more than the others. God has just given you a little more grace for you to get to know more truth. Doesn't mean that you're better than anyone else. Many times people become so proud because they start learning dispensationalism. They start knowing that, you know, I have this assurance of salvation. Instead of giving thanks to God, they start looking down on other people, especially other people or other folks or family members or friends or cousins who does not agree with you. Isn't it funny? When you were in their shoes before you got saved, many times Christians forget that before you got saved, some still after they got saved, before you got saved, you were very boastful, right? Yes. Wow. You hated God. Right. You hated yes. God's people. You really didn't like anything to do with the Word of God. Right. You were same. Yes. It's just that you're just a sinner saved by grace. Right. Then why do you want to show off when you are serving the Lord? Right. What good comes off of it when you boast yourself in front of the others? Nothing good comes off of it. You know, if, you know in the first few moments, people would think that, oh, man, this guy knows something that I don't know. You know? So you guys, people will be like kind of curious. But that curiosity turns into you know, someone who looks down on you like that will be like, okay, okay, I know for sure that that guy is not doing it. That girl's not, that lady is not doing it out of love for me, care for me but it's just to show off their knowledge to me. That's why if you are teaching in a, and you, you have the roles in the church, you have to be careful too. And as teachers, you are not there to show off your knowledge to other people. You have the role to guide people and then lead people the right way. But because you think that you know, I'm in this place, a position, so I'm better than everybody else. I'm better than the people that I'm teaching. I'm better than the congregation of people who does not have my role. Then you're going to fall. And you're going to fall for sure. You have to always check your heart. Many people serve the Lord wrongly because they want accolades from other believers. You don't go out there street preach. You don't go out there street preach to loudest to people so that other people could come up and to congratulate you, right? Man, brother, you have such a loud voice. And then you're like, man, okay, yeah, thank you. But in, in your heart, you're like, hey, you know, it's kind of too late that you told me that. You know, you should have told me right away or yeah. right after I preach, right? Or like you lead someone to the Lord and you're waiting for someone to say, hey, great job, you know? I'm like, oh, why isn't anybody taking picture? You know, Brother Kim going around, you know, take photos and pictures. And you're like, oh, man, where is he? You know, I'm leading someone to the Lord right now. So motivation, your motive is wrong when you're trying to show off to others when you're serving the Lord. I mean, those are primary characteristic of many of the worldly churches out there, worldly cults out there. What's their motivation? They want to show off to other people. They want to show off to their congregation. They want to show off to you know, their brothers and sisters, so-called, in Christ. Then, if you have been serving the Lord in any way to show off to others, then you have been serving the Lord wrongly. Then it's not going to be well for you. The Lord will have to humble you. And when the Lord humbles you, it's not a good experience. And it's not going to be a good thing. So check your heart. If you have been serving the Lord to show off to others. Again, there's a big difference between trying to admonish, encourage, you know, other brethren. You know, but there's always a big difference. It's a fine line. It's it's very fine line. You know, it's like a paper thin. Just when you cross that line and you're like, okay, ah, oh, I know a little more than this person. And then I feel like, you know, they are giving me more respect because I know more than that person, then you've already crossed the line. You always have to understand that at any moment, God could take it away. You know, Christians don't recognize that. 
that's why they go against Dr. Rukme, they go against Pastor Kim, they go against, you know, Dr. Jin Kim. All those people God's using because they think that, oh, you know what, you know, I think I know more than them, you know. I mean, it's a, it's, to me, it's like very foolish to think like that. Why do people try to show off to other people to show to people that they're better than them? So you have to check yourself. Yes. Always. You have to humble yourself. Do I think that I'm better than that person? And it just it doesn't stay inside the church. It stays, I mean, it goes outside of church everywhere. When you see certain group of workers, do you look down on them, right? right? I mean, when you see certain group of people, do you look down on them? When you see certain part of the city, do you look down on them? Mm. I mean, as a human being, you tend to do that yes. because the people sway you, media sways you. That's but you can, you can't fall into devil's trap. Right. Then you say you serve the Lord, but your life shows otherwise. Yeah. You say you serve the Lord, but you're full of, you know, hate. You're full of, you know, looking down on people who does not meet your standard. Amen. Then what is your standard, right? If Lord had his standard, you and I wouldn't be going to heaven, yeah. right? No. You know, Lord's standard is really high. Yes. You know, if, if you wanted to go to heaven, you, you can't have sin. Right. You have to be perfect, but we can't meet that perfectness, right. right? Then why do you expect others to meet that perfectness oh, yeah. when you can't even do it on your own? Amen. It's always funny that, you know, you don't see the dirt on your face, but you see dirt on everyone else, Ooh, right? right. Yeah, you, you know, you, you serve the Lord wrongly, Every time, you know, when you try to show up to other people because, you know, you're like putting dung on your face, right? Those dirt, stupid stuff on your face, and you don't even recognize right. it. But you're blinded by your pride. You're blinded by your boasting. You're blinded by your possessions. You're blinded by everything else, right, your yeah. education. So you must recognize that if I have been serving the Lord wrongly because I wanted to show off to other people, which equates to looking down on other people, then you have to get right with the Lord. Yeah. And you have to make sure that that's not the way I'm going to serve the Lord. Yeah. I'm not going to serve the Lord by looking down on other people. I'm not going to serve the Lord looking down on people because I have a higher position than other people per se. I'm not going to look down on people because I've been saved longer than them. Because a lot of people who's been saved longer than the newer Christians, they live more like the devil than the newer Christians right. and because they get too comfortable, complacent. They get too proud, boasting, you know, haughty. You, know, you name everything, unthankful, doesn't give glory to God. That's why you have to make sure that you're not serving the Lord wrongly by showing off to others. And secondly, I know not many people are in this group, but because of this group, many people fall into wrong doctrine, sin, and many people don't even get saved. You're serving the Lord wrongly if you're serving the Lord to feed your belly, right? Many people, there are so many false preachers out there, and their job is to feed their belly. Their purpose is to feed their belly not to admonish the congregation, not to preach the gospel, because they're not even called to preach. They're just doing it as a job. They're doing it to make money, literally. You see many of the mega churches out there, many of these preachers, and they have scandal after scandal after scandal after scandal. And a lot of people are looking at it and they don't want to get saved anymore. They don't want to get saved. They don't want to go to church. They don't want what they have. Why? What's the purpose? They say they serve the Lord right, but they're serving the Lord wrongly because their purpose is to feed their belly. I want more numbers in our church so that I could get more tied and my salary could get higher and higher and higher, right? What is the number one theme in almost 99.9% .9 of the churches out there to increase numbers in the church? If you're a preacher, you yourself be careful, too. If your purpose in church is to increase numbers, then eventually you're going to get to a point where you're just feeding your belly and your desire. And what's going to happen? You're going to be destroyed. Because people are very fickle. People can 
come and not come, especially when it comes to faith, just like that, right? I mean, people say, you looked at me the wrong way. You didn't say hi to me today, so I'm not coming to that church or going to that church, right? I wasn't recognized, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I gave money to church, but pastor didn't come to me and say, you know, thank you for your donation or thank you for your alms, you know, and then tithe. You know, people think like that. But as so many false preachers say, you know, number after number after number, then what happens? That's serving the Lord wrongly. Why? Because those people cannot preach, you know, hell. They cannot preach against sin. Who wants to sit there and want to listen to preaching where preaching says, you're bad, you're a sinner, you're wicked, week after week after week. But if I were to preach to you, you're good, you know, you're right, you know, God loves you every single week without talking about God is just God, you know, God is God of judgment. If I don't mention that, I guarantee within a few months, within a few years, all the seats in here will be filled. Yes, that's right. Because people want to hear that they're okay. People want to hear that they're good. People want to hear that everything's going to be all right. No, not everything's going to be all right. If you sin, you know, your life is going to turn upside down if it hasn't already. If you sin, you have to reap what you sow. Right. If you're living in sin, you never have satisfaction. You never have peace. Of course, if you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you won't have to worry about burning in hell. Amen. But life after getting saved is totally different. It's up to you. Yeah. It's up to how you serve God. But if you follow folks or if you were to come to church or serve the Lord to feed your belly in any way, then you're serving the Lord wrongly. And we have a slew of people out there, right? Because of Internet, that's why you have to be careful. You have so many people saying that, okay, I'm just going to start serving the Lord through the Internet ministry and just start their own channels. And then they teach a lot of gibberish, right? They teach wrong doctrine. And they make some money off of it through that. They're using God's name, Lord's name, to make money. I mean, that's a pretty horrible thing. Probably that's, right. that's like the worst thing you could ever do. Yeah. Selling out Lord's name to feed your belly. And if you're one of those people, you better get right with the Lord. I mean, you've got to stop right now. If you wanted to get, you know, some kind of compensation because you're serving the Lord, man, that's serving the Lord in a very, very, very wrong way. Right. And if you have an aspiration of doing that one day, man, you got to kill that aspiration right now. Because some people would think that, you know what, I love the Lord, and you know, I know God's going to call me one day, and I know... When people come, I don't have to work anymore. And then through that, I'm going to just make my living. Wow. You know, that's, that's what many of the you know, false preachers and false you know, teachers wow. are like. Yes. You know, they, think, they think it's easy money. But to them, it is easy money because they never worked the day in their life. Or they, they work and they were always lazy. But they oh. found that using God's name in vain, using Lord's name, they could feed their belly. There are many examples, right? There were failures in their life because they were lazy, they never worked hard, but somehow they said I received some vision from God, and then they start saying that, you know what, I have healing power. You know, you come to me, I pray for you for three years, and you're going to get healed from your cancer. You're going to get healed from a bunch of other stuff. But people are desperate, and they follow. Right? They want to grab to glimmer of hope somewhere. I mean, if you're a preacher out there using people in that way, man, you know, I don't know what's going to happen to you, but man, I'm scared for you, right? Using God's name to take advantage of people's, you know, desperate situations. And I hope that, pray to God that none of the folks here will ever turn out like that, including myself. You and I have to be careful. In front of 
money, in front of fame, in front of lust out there, you and I could fall at any moment. And we could serve the Lord wrongly at any moment. I mean, think about Billy Graham. Whatever happened to him? You know, one of the greatest preachers out there. But he fell. And then don't tell me that you're better than Billy Graham, right? I mean, have you led like thousands and thousands of souls to the Lord? No. Hundreds of thousands. I mean, he was used by God in the past. But what happened? He's an example for us to learn from. Yes. You and I, if we're not careful at any moment, if we serve the Lord in a wrong way, I'm pretty sure at some point he thought, okay, I'm serving the Lord, right? By, you know, just saying okay with, you know, Catholic doctrine, right? It's okay for other religions, you know. I'm still going to talk about Jesus Christ. But once compromise starts happening, you start getting blinded, but your belly is getting filled very well. I'm pretty sure it was compensated very well, you know. And then you start losing the sight of serving the Lord only. And then you start serving man, and you think you're serving God as well. Then what happened? What's the end, right? I mean, he ended up badly. He's just one example. I'm pretty sure you know And as we're in this ministry for a long time, in a Bible-believing ministry, you see so many so-called Bible believers who fall because they're feeding their belly through the ministry. They're using this ministry and Lord's name to become bigger, to make more money. I mean, love of money is root of all evil. So if you have any, any aspiration to feed your belly through this ministry, you better kill it. You better get right with the Lord. We have many other, you know, wrong ways to serve the Lord. But, you know, third one, before I go to the serving the Lord in a right way, third one is not being submissive to proper authority. That's serving the Lord wrongly. You're just here to serve the Lord just on your own way, right? Even though even the Lord has put up pastors, right? To lead the church, you're like, you know what? That's not how you should serve the Lord. Just like those Israelites, way back, you know, in Numbers, you know, Book of Numbers, you know, chapter 16, you have many examples. You know what? You know, that's not how you should do it, Pastor. Right? This is how you should do it. I've seen these churches grow, I've seen these people get blessed, right? You know, it's always that you know more. I'm not saying that, you know, pastors don't make mistakes. Of course, human beings make mistakes all the time. But your heart is where it's at, right? Are you willing to follow man of God with all of your heart? Or are you willing to follow partially? Or are you willing to just not follow? You have your own agenda, When you're coming to a Bible-believing church, you're going to get some out of it, and then you're going to go out there and do your own thing. Then you shouldn't be here, right? right? Because the Lord's not going to bless it. I've said it over and over and over. If you do not agree with the way we run our church, obviously you're not submissive to proper authority. Just go to places where they're not, Submissive to proper authority, right? Be with a group of people, a bunch of people who have your same viewpoint and same opinions and think the same way. And probably you guys are all going to hate each other, right? Because everybody has a different, you know, authority that they serve. God put people, leaders in place so that there will be structure. There won't be any confusion, right? I mean, why would Apostle Paul say in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, be followers of me, even as I am also of Christ? As long as people that God put in place in leadership follows Christ, then you follow. Simple yes. as that. They have their up and downs. Don't get me wrong. Not everybody's a human being. But as long as God uses that person in the ministry, you just follow. Yes. Right? It's not that, you know, they're better than you, but they're just serving the Lord where God uses them to lead, just like Moses. You rebel against men of God, leaders of church, nothing good comes of it. Look at Israelites. 
they could even get into promised land. Yeah. Those people, 40 years in the wilderness, that's it. Some of you might have been at our church for many, many years. Five years, 10 years, 15 years. But if you still aren't submissive to the authority that God has put in place, you're going to end up like Israelites. You could be at that promised land, but you won't be able to get in. Right. Yeah. You could be at that line to get the Lord's blessing. You won't be able to get it because you have served the Lord wrongly. A lot of times people think that, you know, they wronged me you know, as a pastor and pastor's wife. But they don't really look at beyond that. Why do you think that really happened, right? If God says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are they called according to his purpose, according to Romans 8, 28, there must be a reason why that happened. Then you have to pray. Instead of blaming the people that God has put in place, you should check yourself first. Yes. You should always be like, you know, Probably is something in my life you know, that needs to be corrected. And most likely it is something that's in your life needs to be corrected. It's probably sin somewhere, or maybe not. It's for you to pray for the leaders at that moment. If that leader makes a wrong choice, you pray that they make the right choice. Amen. It's not like you want to switch place, right? A lot of people think that, oh, I could do better than that person. Then you tell them, you do it. Oh, no, I don't want to do it, right? You know, you know why don't you lead the church? You know, why don't you be in that you know, pastor's wife's spot? You want to be heard, right? Like those titles, right? They're like, okay, oh, man, being called a pastor must be pretty nice, you know? Being called a pastor's wife must be pretty nice, you know? It's not, right? I mean, you do it because God called you to do it. Right. If God didn't call you to do it, you know, I, I, why would I do this, you know? I mean, dealing with all these human beings, you know, their emotions, yeah. people who, you know, talk behind you, gossip you, you know. Your pastor's wife, you know, your wife has to deal with all these folks, you know. They say they serve God, but they're actually, you know, hindering the ministry by talking, you know, behind people's back. Yeah especially, you know, pastor's wife's back. You know, that's not how you should teach the children. People complain. You know, we, we have so many complainers, especially, you know, sisters and men who's influenced by sisters, like their wives. They're like, oh, you know, their discipline is too hard at the church. You know, I never yell at my church or I never even, you know, say that my children's wrong. You know, just like how the public school is teaching, you know, you're always right. You know, you're always right. If they ask me to give them toy, I give them toy. If they ask me to give them video games, I give them video game. If they ask me for money, I give them money all the time because I want their love, you know, and I want them to feel that I love them. I mean, you're just destroying them. Yeah. You're destroying your children when you give them everything they want. Amen. You provide their need, but you don't need to give them what they want. A lot of times, that's when people fall in. And those kids, they are on their way to destruction. Right. Then you have to think, man, have I been 100% submissive? Have I been 100% following the leaders that Lord has put in place? You always have to remember that, you know, behind next to me is my wife. Behind Pastor Kim, that's Mrs. Kim, right? You have to know, yeah. right? I mean... You cannot just say, oh, you know. Some people have these thoughts. Hopefully it's not you. Yeah, man. Pastor's strong. He's a man of God. How dare I will say anything to him? Because I can't, I can't, you know, I can't defeat that person, you know. But man, when you look at, you know, pastor's wife, weaker, a weaker vessel, you're like, oh, yeah. I, I think I could match up with that person, you know. And you're like, oh, she shouldn't be like that. She shouldn't be like this. And then you, you know, are talking, you know, we get stuck behind that person's back. Then you're definitely serving the Lord in a wrong way. 
And on top of that, you know, Lord will judge you like how he judged Israel. Like, yeah. Simple as that. When you heard, especially, you know, man of God's wives, right? Pastor's wife, I don't know. Lord will definitely judge you. Don't let those thoughts come to you, dwell in you, and control you, and make you to put in those actions. So that's why you have to, you know, guard your mouth. Amen. It's very easy to do it. Saying that you are serving the Lord, but essentially you're serving the devil. You know what? This is better for the ministry if they did, they did this, this way, that way, right? Best thing is that you talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, you know, if you have any, you know, issues, suggestions, recommendations. Like you talk to me personally, you talk to my wife personally. Last thing you want to do is talk amongst yourself or talk with other brethren and start discussing it should be that way, this way. You know, it should be other way. <laughs> you think it stops there? No, it grows and grows and grows. And that's what devil wants. Devil wants one of you to start that conversation. Devil wants one of you to put the seed in others. Then definitely devil's going to use you. Devil's always waiting. You know, especially when the spirit is good in the church, when the ministry is going well, people are getting saved left and right. You know, people's, you know, they're growing in the sound doctrine. And then suddenly, out of the blue, you know, you start going, man, I don't like how we're doing street preaching, you know. You know, why are girls out there, you know, saying stuff, you know, on the street? And you start becoming very, very, you know, self-righteous. Like, oh. You know, well, why are we, you know, eating at this place all the time, you know? And then you're like, man, why are we, you know, not doing this more often, right? And then you start talking, right? That church is doing that, but how come our church isn't doing it? And then you start comparing, you know, that local church's ministry to other ministry. That's what the devil wants you to do. Yes. See, you know. San Jose, Dr. Jin Kim's ministry is different from our ministry. But we all have same alignment when it comes to doctrine, teaching, preaching. But each ministry is different. The way he runs his ministry in San Jose is different from the way we run our ministry in Ontario, California. But you're like, oh, you know, the way he teaches, maybe this is how we should t teach or vice versa, he shouldn't teach like that, they should teach like us, leave it alone. It's how God wants that local ministry to run yeah. each way. Then you should come to a point that if I haven't been submissive to our leaders, leaders' wives, and our policy set in place, I should do two things. Again, it's for your own benefit. You either follow or you just go to a place that you don't want to follow. Be with a bunch of people who doesn't want to follow. Yeah. You have more fun, but eventually you want to probably kill each other and you, know, you won't have anywhere to go. Right. From experience from other folks, right? Yeah. That's why it is important for you to understand that if I want to serve the Lord right, I must understand that I am not serving the Lord to show up to others, to feed my belly, and not being submissive to authorities, authorities that God has put in place. All right. I guarantee you, if you're not submissive to the authorities that God has put in place here, you're not going to be submissive to the local laws in your own jurisdiction. You're going to be the one who's going to be always complaining about law, his, law here, there, there, everywhere, yeah. right? You know, we have a prosecutor in here. You know, that's where people get in trouble, right? You're like, the, but God has put, you know, Leaders in place, inside and outside of church. And then you are to follow the authority. Yes. Right? As long as it's not against the word of God. Amen. Right? For example, speed limit. Just follow it. And if you get ticket because you, you sped too much, then accept it. Yeah. Right? Simple as that. You can't be blaming the lie. The speed limit should be 90 miles per hour. You know? I mean, they put it in place. It's... You follow. Yeah. You know, I mean, simple things. I mean, like jaywalking, right? You get ticket for jaywalking. Yeah. It's not complaining, right? You, you broke the law. 
And then don't say like, oh, you know, I shouldn't have gotten that ticket. I mean, essentially, you did break it, then you follow, Amen. right? If you really hate it so much, then go to a different country, yeah. you know, or go live off grid in Appalachia Mountain or Colorado, you know, Rockies. Right. Because God has put these things in place and it's biblical. That's how you do it. Then, now we talked about, you know, all these wrong ways to serve the Lord. Then what's the right way to serve the Lord? Number one, you must be saved. That's it. If you want to serve the Lord right, you have to be saved. Because there are so many people out there serving the Lord wrongly because they're not saved. I mean, Jehovah's Witnesses out there, many of them, they have the greatest zeal. They try to live proper lives. I mean, I have many friends, you know, who are Jehovah's Witness. If you take out the Bible part, salvation part, doctrine part, they live very, very clean life, yeah. exemplary. But they're doing it the wrong way. You could be zealous. You could be sincere, but you could be wrong. Yeah. I mean, even the Mormonism out there, yeah. because their doctrine is wrong. So in order for you to serve the Lord right, you must be saved, and you must know that you're saved. Amen. You need to have assurance of salvation to serve the Lord right. Yeah. How can you have any power in your voice, in your life, if you don't know where you're going after you die? Right. I'm telling you, many, many of you are saved, but because of you know, you're shallow in your doctrine, because maybe no one showed you from the Word of God, how to really get saved, and how know, you, you can know for sure that you are safe, you're always wondering. You're worried. You're preoccupied. Am I really going to heaven? I accepted Christ every week for the last 10 years. Am I really going to heaven? You know? I'm, I mean, maybe you're already saved, right? Because all you have to know is that you're a sinner on your way to hell, Believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, you know, believe He is God and accept Him in your heart as your Lord and Savior, you're saved. Amen. Simple as that. Yes. Right? But if you don't know for sure where you're going after you die, you cannot serve the Lord right. right. That's why you must know for sure that where you're going if you want to serve the Lord right. Because there's confidence in folks serving the Lord when they know where they're going after they Amen. die compared to people who's working to go to heaven, right? right? I mean, Apostle Paul said, right? I believe and therefore have I spoken. I believe, and I believe that if I were to die right now, I'm going to go to heaven. That's how I'm speaking to you. Right. You should get saved from Simple. hell. Simple as that. You have power. And secondly, if you want to serve the Lord right, you must love the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You have to love the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, that's bottom line. Like, your heart has to truly love the Lord Jesus Christ if you want to serve the Lord right. You know, Luke 10, 27 says, And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind. And then secondly, and thy neighbor as thyself. You must love the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a question of when you feel like loving the Lord. It's, it's imperative. If you want to serve the Lord right, you have to serve Him with all of your heart. Because John 14, 15 says, If ye love me, this is what the Lord said, keep my commandments. Because you're going to keep the Lord's commandments. You're going to obey the Word of God when you love Him. What's the best way to serve anyone? Just obey them. Right? Best way to serve the Lord is by loving the Lord. And how you do that? By keeping His commandments. Then you look at your life. Have I been serving the Lord right? I mean, if you are saved and you know for sure, hey, good. Check mark, right? However, are you serving the Lord by loving Him with all of your heart? Everything involves you. Everything that's going on in your life, you do it because you love the Lord. That's how it has to become. I love my wife because I love the Lord, because that's what Lord did for me. Right? If 
you don't love the Lord Jesus Christ, you can't love your spouses like how you ought to love, right? Yeah. If you don't love Jesus Christ, you can't love your children like how you ought to love your children. If you don't love Jesus Christ, you can't love your parents how you ought to love your parents. So, secondly, if you really want to serve the Lord right, you have to love Jesus Christ. Then everything, you know, the Bible says love of God constraineth us. Because of love of Christ, everything, you're doing it because of that fact. Because of love of Christ, I could serve him even though it's very hard. My life is hard, you know, financially, you know, relationship-wise, health-wise. I could still serve the Lord right because I love him. Because his love constrains me. His love is that engine makes me go. His love is that engine makes me do what he wants me to do. Amen. His love is that engine makes me go through the hardships and trials yes. in my life. All the pains and suffering, I can still go through and serve the Lord because his love constrains me. His love makes it happen for me. Amen. Because if you weren't for the love of Jesus Christ, where would you be, right? If you weren't for the Lord Jesus Christ and his love for you and I, where would we be, right? We'll be down in the gutter on our way to hell, but because of his love, we can serve him the right way. Then thirdly, you know, if you are saved, know for sure where you're going, if you love Jesus Christ, that's the right way to serve the Lord. And what else do you need to serve the Lord right? You must love souls out there. You must love souls, period. Christ had passion for lost souls out there. Christ had passion for souls, period. He had compassion. You know, his heart went out to lost out there. All the guilty sinners like you and I, right? He came to seek and to save according to Luke 19.10. He had compassion on them, right? You have compassion on souls, lost souls out there. I mean, he had compassion on the blind in their darkness. He had compassion on the lepers in their uncleanness. He had compassion on the sick in their weakness. He had compassion on the hungry in their need. He had compassion for lonely people. He had compassion for people in sorrow. See, compassion has been defined as feeling the pain in another person's heart, right? Have you ever put yourself in another person's heart? Then you would have compassion on them. All these lost souls out there, they could be toughest guy, toughest girls out there. They could be proud, boastful, everything. But deep inside, they have that pain. Yeah. Some pain is in there. And their pain to burn in hell is going to eventually overrule them until their deathbed, right? Then you have to have compassion. You know, love is measured by sacrifice made on behalf of the one loved, right? It's sacrifice. What is true love if you don't sacrifice for that person? That's why we are told that Christ loved the church and gave himself for it in Ephesians 5.25. If you want to love the, if, and if you want to serve the Lord right, you must love souls. And you must love souls here as well, right? What was the commandment, right? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind. And secondly, and thy neighbor as thyself. I mean, do you love your brethren? I mean, do you have compassion for your brethren? Many times we can fall into this trap where we love the lost soul so much, we don't love the saved souls. Right? We love the lost soul so much that we neglect the saved souls. You gotta have balance. Yeah. And there are people who are so nice to lost souls out there, but they're very mean and jerk to safe souls. It's like, wow, man, when I see you, you know, talk to people outside of church, you know, you're like the nicest person, right? But inside church, man, you're a jerk. You know, you always, you know, talk bad things about other people. You're always complaining and murmuring about everything that has to do with church and policy and ministry and food and everything and people, classes. 
But outside the church, man, you're such a nice person. You're gentle, you're meek, right? Because you don't have love for the souls, your brethren. If you want to serve the Lord right, you have to not only love the lost souls out there, you have to love the souls that is sitting next to you who's saved. You can't be a real worker for Christ without a deep passion for lost souls and deep passion for your brethren. You have to. That's how you preach the gospel to others, and that's how you can be an encouragement, admonishment, I mean, you could, for brothers and sisters in Christ. When brothers and sisters think of you, do they think of you as someone who's compassionate, or do they think of you as someone who's selfish? When brothers and sisters think about you, do they think of you as someone who's generous, gentle, and meek, or someone who's proud, someone who's haughty, someone who doesn't care about others? Then you have to think. How can you say you serve the Lord when you don't serve the brethren? How can you say you're, you want to serve the Lord right when you don't even love your brethren? Right. Obviously, there's a fine line, right? If brothers living like the devil, you know, Sisters living like the devil, causing dissension inside a church, right? You pray for them. You isolate them, right? That's a biblical way. But just in a normal sense, right? I mean, do you really love your brethren? Do you really love their souls? If you don't, then don't say that I'm serving the Lord right. And how to serve the Lord right? Next, you know, fourth thing is that you must be a student of the Bible, if you don't know what the Lord wants you to do, how are you going to serve him right? right? I mean, if you don't know the right doctrines, how are you going to serve the Lord right? Which means that in order to serve the Lord right, you must read the Bible from cover to cover. Amen. You can't be stuck in a favorite verse all the time. right? You can't be stuck at the salvation verses all the time. You literally have to read from Genesis to Revelation. You must make time you must make time to be the student of the Bible. That means you probably have to sleep less to read the Word of God. You have to make sacrifice because it's not an easy task to be a student of the Word of God. 100%. It's not easy. But it comes from persistence, and it comes from studying and studying and studying. It's not an easy role. If we're an easy role, everybody here will be a Bible scholar. Everybody here will know every single doctrine. You'll know all the dispensationalism, right? But it's not. You have to be persistent, and you have to understand that it's not an easy role. Accept that it's not an easy role, which means it's going to require my sacrifice, which means it's going to require my dedication. It's going to require my devotion to be a student of the Word of God. If you want to serve the Lord right, you have to study the Word of God. You have to spend time in the Word of God. You can't be out there witnessing 24-7 and say that I'm serving the Lord right. It has to be a balance. You have to read the Word of God, understand dispensationalism, and understand certain doctrines, understand deep doctrines, understand the truth. Because you're, you're not going to have just conversation about salvation all the time. Right. That's very shallow. You've got to have conversation and be able to teach deeper doctrines. Like Brother Bogey did, right? You know, yeah. to new believers or people that, who doesn't come to our church. You have to be able to plant and you have to be able to teach. And that's how you serve God. What if a person that you witness to and they don't have nowhere to go and they look for you as a source to teach them? Are you going to talk about don't burn in hell every single week? No, they have to grow. They need different type of meat, right. right? They need different type of milk. Yes. They need some different type of food to grow and nutrients. In order to do that, the way to serve the Lord right is to become a student of the Bible. And lastly, 
You know, I, I mentioned it from the beginning, how you serve the Lord wrongly. In order to serve the Lord right, you must follow the right people. Amen. And you must follow the right people from all of your heart. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Don't let the devil get you, make you think that, oh, you know, I'm better than the leaders. I'm better than the pastors and pastors' wife. You know, you end up like Aaron and Miriam and those Israelites. Apostle Paul said it for a reason. This carnal Corinthian church, right, full of sin. Now, don't you think many people are thinking that way? First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Apostle Paul's like, hey, follow me because I follow Christ. Right? Simple as that. And Apostle Paul, as a human being, you know, wasn't perfect. But he said, follow me, because I also am of Christ. If you want to serve the Lord right, you are going to follow the right people. Yeah. You're going to follow the people that God has put in place. If I did not follow Pastor Kim, you know, I would have gone the wrong way. You know? Not everything is perfect, but you follow I mean, people who follow Moses, right? Joshua and Caleb. I mean, they went to promised land, right? Out of those 12 spies. I mean, you have that great example. Then, just like Apostle Paul said, if you're not serve the Lord right, you are going to follow. And when you follow someone in the Bible, you do it 100% Amen. from the bottom of your heart. Yeah. You don't just pick and choose, right? right. You know what? You know, I like the way he leads street ministry. I follow. I don't like the way he leads Bible study. I don't follow. No. You follow 100%. Then if you were to do that, in conclusion, you get to hear this. I mean, I think this is a testimony, and this is something that we all want to hear at the judgment seat of Christ. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 25, 21. Matthew 25, 21. If you want to serve the Lord right, you know, you must be saved. You know, you, should, you have to know for sure you got to love the Lord more than anything. You got to love the souls. You got to love the Bible, being the student of the Bible. You got to follow the man of God. Amen. Then you do all that. Then Matthew 25, 21, the Bible says, He the Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Man, I would love to hear that from my Lord and Savior. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. How? If you serve the Lord right, then you will get to hear that. If you serve the Lord wrongly, and you get all this reprimand, yes. chastisement, which Apostle Paul said, knowing the terror of the Lord, it's going to be scary. That's why you and I, it's not too late. If we have been serving the Lord wrongly, we have a chance to get right with the Lord. Yes. And after you get right with the Lord, you serve the Lord in the right way. Let's pray.